we've decided that we are going to use the equation, the net torque equation of Newton's second law, which is net torque equals I times alpha. Uh, in, in a, uh, we're, we're not going to need separate X and Y versions of the net torque equation. Um, we can just say that net torque equals I times alpha. We don't need separate X and Y versions for net torque, only for net force. Okay. Uh, and then for completeness, we can say there's going to be the torque from the hinge. There's going to be uh, the torque from the boom. There's going to be the torque from the weight of the sign. And there's going to be the torque from the tension force. Now, we've already decided that the torque from the hinges is zero because the hinge forces are being applied at the pivot. We've discussed that when a, uh, a force is applied at the pivot, uh, it doesn't create any torque. Uh, then the uh, torque from the boom, I should actually subtract that. We decided that the torque from the boom was negative 12.25 Newton meters. It's uh, probably most convenient though to leave, uh, not to write the units in the Newton second law, even though we know these are the standard units. The torque from the sine was negative 9,800 Newton meters. It's crucial again to put in the correct signs. And the torque from the tension we decided was plus point two point two five times the tension force. Make sure you're using good notation. Remember, we're using a, a tau symbol, symbol for torque and a capital T for tension. Here's capital T for tension. Here's tau for torque. And this would be the torque from the tension force. So the torque from the tension force is plus 2.25 times the magnitude of the tension force. All right, so, so all the work that we did in, did in the main body of the tutoring session, all the work that we did to identify the forces and then to identify the torques, we did all of that so we would able to be able to list the torques here on the left-hand side of our net torque equation. Before you, uh, in order to list the net torque, uh, in order to, to fill in the net torque side, you have to have uh, gotten expressions or numbers for all of the individual torques. All right, well, uh, one thing that would be clearly good to do is to do some calculations here. So uh, we've got, uh, and, and you can see all these numbers match what we got uh, earlier. So we did get that the torque of the boom was negative 1225. The torque of the sine was negative 9800. Torque from the tension force, positive 2.25. And torque from the hinge was zero. So I just plug those into our equation over here. Let's do this calculation, negative 1225 minus 9800. Negative 1225 minus 9800, that's negative 11025. All right. Now, remember, what was the question asking us for? Remember that the question is asking us for the tension force. So it seems like we got a problem because there's still two other unknowns in this equation. How can we get rid of one of these unknowns on the right-hand side? Well, it really isn't uh, clear what I would be over here. Um, however, it should be very clear what alpha is. Why is it so clear what alpha is? Well, remember, this is a statics problem. Remember, we were trying to figure out what is the, the tension that would be required to hold the boom and the sign motionless. We want to know the tension that's required to hold the boom and the sign motionless. But if something is motionless over a period of time, then its acceleration is zero. Uh, that should be a problem-solving technique that you've already used many times now um, in the course of your, uh, if, of your physics course. So you should be very comfortable with the idea that if an object is motionless over a period of time, uh, then its acceleration is zero. Uh, technically, the reason for that is if you're motionless over a period of time, um, then your velocity is constant at zero. And when your velocity is constant, your acceleration is zero. Okay, so because uh, we're going to hold this boom motionless over a period of time, 
uh, its velocity will be constant uh, at zero, and since its velocity is constant, its acceleration is zero. Uh, and notice now that the right-hand side is going to end up being zero. Zero times i is just zero. So uh, I would mention, uh, I hope that uh, you wouldn't spend a long, waste a long time trying to figure out i on a statics problem. You can see that students can easily waste a lot of time trying to figure out what i is, uh, but that is a waste of time because i is just going to get multiplied by zero and get canceled out of the equation anyway. So on a statics problem, i will be, uh, I will be uh, multiplied by zero, so you don't need to actually calculate what i is. Of course, if this was not a statics problem, if the acceleration was not zero, then it would be important to figure out what i is. Uh, but in this case, it's not, because it's just going to get multiplied by zero. All right, now this should be pretty simple algebra. We add 11.025 to both sides. We're trying to get the tension by itself. We divide both sides by 2.25 because, again, we're trying to get the tension by itself, and we calculate 11.025 divided by 2.25, uh, 4,900. And we know that since we've been using standard units, our answer should come out in standard units, which are newtons. Remember that tension is a force, not a torque. So it should come out in the units for force, which are newtons. 11.025 divided by 2.25. Yeah, that looks right. All right, so now we've answered our question. We figured out that the tension force was 4,900 newtons. Remember, again, how did we know that we should use the net torque equation and not one of the net force equations? Because uh, we saw there would be only one unknown in the net torque equation. The only unknown in the net torque equation uh, was the tension force here involved in the torque from the tension. Uh, so that was the easiest equation uh, to solve. All right, so that answers the question that we were trying to answer originally. It would take 4,900 newtons of force to hold uh, the boom uh, in place. All right, that, that was the question that... Uh, was posed in, in, the, in these students' problem in the tutoring session. Uh, however, I should mention that uh, in most courses, you would also be expected to figure out the hinge force as well. In most courses, you would also be expected to figure out how big the hinge forces are. Um, so I guess for completeness, I, I'll go ahead and quickly sketch how we can find these hinge forces as well. Um, so how are we going to go ahead and find the hinge forces? Well, we just used our net torque equation. But we still have two more uh, important equations in our armory here. We also have the net force x and the net force y equations. Um, so let's use those equations now. It doesn't really matter what order uh, you use those two equations in now. So I'll go ahead and uh, use the net force x equation. Now, what are our x forces? Uh, well, we have uh, the x force from the hinge. Uh, and we had decided that that would force would be to the right. So that would be positive. We decided the hinge force would be to the right, so that would be positive. I'm using a dot here uh, because uh, this symbol just stands for magnitude. 
Uh, this is just a symbol that I, I made up, but I like to use a dot to indicate when a, when a variable stands for a magnitude. Since we've already put in the sign here, this variable just stands for the magnitude of the hinge force. Uh, now, there is no x component to the weight of the boom, and there's no x component to the weight of the sign, but there is an x component to the tension force. So we're also going to have uh, the tension force. You can see that the tension force is pointing up and to the left. So the x component is pointing to the left in the negative direction. So the tension force is going to be to the left. Uh, so we'll have to uh, break that tension force into components now. 